Hey YouTube, today we're going to be doing an unboxing and overview of the Evo X2 from GMK Tech as the box shows here. So it comes in this pretty big box and for those of you that are wondering what this is, this is a mini PC. So it is a, a NUC or NUC next unit of compute. It says it on the box there, so let's go ahead and open it up. And there we go. Inside we have the unit itself. So this is a mini PC with 128 gigabytes of LPDDR5X running at 8000. So yeah, that much RAM running at that kind of speed. So this is the overall look and feel of the unit. The unit is, has this recycled aluminum finish here, so pretty sturdy. Um, on the bottom, it can be mounted either like this. So this is the correct orientation for it to be vertically mounted with the AMD stickers here so that's actually the first time i've seen a ryzen ai max plus sticker there and then they have the windows 11 one it's funny how they put the windows one at a 90 degree angle there then there's the gmk tech logo then you have a fan mode button which also doubles as an rgb uh, profile switcher there and then you have the power button on the front a performance mode toggle button that can toggle between silent, balanced, and performance modes. A full SD card slot reader because this is a mini PC, so that is a good thing to include. USB 4, so 40 gigabit USB 4, so any Thunderbolt 4 docking station will work with this. So you can further expand the connectivity externally. Then you have two of the Super speed USB 3.0 ports there, and then a combo audio and headphone jack down at the bottom there. So I can see they've got a lot of ventilation here. This is probably intake, if I had to guess, for the uh, this side of the unit. And then on this side, there's a lot of fan grill cutouts here. This is probably the intake for the APU itself. And then you have the exhaust on the back. So on the rear, you have where the power cable goes, and it does come with a 230 watt charger. We will look at that separately here in a little bit. A Kensington lock, similar to laptops. A second three and a half inch phone jack. And then it says here, for faster setup, avoid connecting the LAN. So underneath this is the 2.5 gigabit ethernet interface. So it's nice that they include this over a standard one gig. This way, if anyone has like two gig fiber, for example, in their house, they'd be able to get faster download speeds. And then another USB 3.0 super speed, and then a second USB 4 40 gigabit port. So it's nice that they have the full implementation from the Strix Halo SOC because it does offer natively two USB 4 interfaces. So it is using both of them. And then it has display port and HDMI 2.1 as well as two USB type A ports that are 2.0 right there. So one thing I do wanna mention is you can drive up to four external monitors just off of this. One would be DisplayPort, the second would be HDMI, the third would be this USB 4 here. And then if you wanted a fourth one, you can connect the fourth one to this USB 4 on the front here. So it does support four displays. That is in line with what the Strix Halo platform supports. So that is good to see that GMK Tech didn't leave anything on the table in terms of connectivity options. So a couple of other things are in the box that I found. So one of them is this GMK Tech paper that kind of goes over the, it just lists all the different features, the ports and things like that. And then it does go through a little bit of a setup to go through the Windows setup. And then the other things in the box include a what looks to be an AC adapter. So let's go ahead and open this. This is probably the power cord. You also get the power plug, depending on your regions. This is a standard one for North America. And then an HDMI cable is also included. And then in here, we have the power adapter itself. So this is a 230 watt power adapter that does use the three pins. Because Strix Halo can support up to three NVMe drives, the model that GMK Tech is working with here, so the motherboard that they have 
decided to go with supports two SSDs. One two terabyte is pre-installed. We'll go ahead and open that. Okay, so once the screws are off the bottom, you can remove the aluminum plate here. It doesn't look like they're it doesn't look like it's being used for cooling. But underneath here, you can see inside, it does come pre-installed with Windows Pro on a two terabyte standard M.2 SSD. So it's a Gen 4 SSD. And then it does have, you can see in there, an extra slot. Now, if you're going to use a Gen 4 or Gen 5, there is no cooling included. So if you're going to add a second SSD, like for example, I'm gonna add this P310 here, four terabyte. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that if you're adding an SSD to this platform as a secondary drive, you get one that already has a pre-installed heatsink like this crucial P310 four terabyte. It does come with the pre-installed screw there. So you don't have to use the screw that used to come with these SSDs. But I'm gonna go ahead and install that now. And it looks like it only does support the standard 2280 form factor. There are no other holes here, as far as I can tell, to secure a smaller SSD. All right, so I have added four terabytes of secondary storage, in addition to the two terabytes that come pre-installed. So now I have six terabytes of storage, so plenty for AI and games. Okay, we're gonna do the initial power on here. All right, and I've connected all three. There's the GM K Tech. So that one is the one that boots up. Does have some RGB in there. So it's not what I would call quiet but it's not intrusively loud. However, I think if you're playing games or something for an extended period of time, this will generate about 45 decibels of noise, which is equivalent to a blower style graphics card. If you remember how those sound, this is similar to that. So not as bad as a gaming laptop by any means, but it is not silent when you under a heavy load. All right, so I've just got to go through the Windows setup and then we'll do a couple of tests and then come back here for the end. Okay, I did want to get into the BIOS here just to kind of show the options. So you can see we've got the standard Aptio AMI BIOS. So it doesn't have any sort of fancy thing that you might be used to if you are someone who builds a PC using one of the four major motherboard brands. Well, this is definitely workable. The power mode default is balance mode, which typically means 85 watt power limit, so it's about, what, 60% out of the 140 TDP available. I'm going to leave it in that for now because that gives us about 90, 93 to 96% of the total performance. If you were to go to performance mode, that would then do the full 120 watt with a boost to 140 watt, um, but we're gonna leave it in the stock default. I like to test things at baseline first just to get an idea of how it comes out of the box. But one thing I am going to change is we're going to do stuff like disable wake on LAN and we're going to we're going to go into the graphics configuration here. So the automatic it's saying auto with 64 gigabyte frame buffer. I'm going to do UMA unified memory architecture specified and I want to do 32 gigabytes of VRAM instead of 64. That way the total system, the CPU will get 96 gigabytes of RAM and the GPU will get 32 gigabytes of RAM. So this is similar to running like an RTX 5090 in terms of VRAM amount while still having 96 gigabytes of system RAM. This is currently how my MSI Godlike system is set up. So I wanna to try to match that as close as possible. And then the trusted computing, we're gonna leave TPM enabled, CPU configuration, just to kind of look and see what's in here. You have NX mode and SVM for virtualization. So if you run virtual machines, for example, the IOMMU group grouping here, we'll just leave it on auto and then SMT. So the cores on the Strix Halo CPU are all dual threaded. If you want to disable that, 
you would go in here and turn off this SMT. I like how they literally say hyper-threading in parentheses to give people who are not familiar with what SMT means, simultaneous multi-threading, a heads up on what the setting is actually doing. So if they're familiar with an Intel platform, for example, Intel no longer has hyper-threading on their current CPUs with the Arrow Lake, but AMD CPUs, all of them still have the quote-unquote hyper-threading capability. So in core performance boost, we're gonna leave that enabled. Memory configuration, maximum memory clock, data speed. We're just gonna leave this on auto. This should be able to go all the way up to 8,000 when it's on auto. Hardware monitor, so you can see the fans are really quiet right now because it's not really doing anything. You do have smart fan control, which you can enable. And that will just kind of set it to a static. We're gonna disable that. And then system fan control, system smart fan. If we enable this, we'll disable that. So that's kind of what those do. And you can see the fan speed showing there in the BIOS. I like how it shows that in real time. A lot of these basic BIOSes don't show things like that, but you can see it ramping back down because it's back to auto. And then IO port access, so that you can disable things like Bluetooth, radios, Wi-Fi radios, the SD card, and then you have your three and a half inch, dual three and a half inch uh, audio, analog audio there. So you can disable those things if you want, the LAN, etc. So we'll just leave everything enabled, and that is pretty much it. You can set a BIOS password if you want. Secure boot should be enabled. We'll just do standard. And then, not sure why that, oh, that was probably set to off, and that's how they were able to kind of like bypass some of the Windows stuff on the initial registration. And then in here, fast boot is enabled. And then we have our boot drives. So if you're doing a BIOS update, for example, USB devices option one, or if you want to boot Linux off of a USB, then this would be your primary. And then we have the Fizon controller, and then we have the, uh, I don't have an OS on my Crucial P310 in here, but that's the other one. And then you can boot from network. And then a CD-ROM, if one is detected, it will use that as the fail-safe fallback. And that's pretty much it. So we're gonna go ahead and save and reset and get into Windows here. Okay, so we're in Windows now and you can see the total memory is 128 gigabytes running at DDR5-8000, eight out of eight. So this is a quad channel memory system similar to the TRX-50 Threadripper platform from AMD. And it shows down here 96 gigabytes for the CPU because I have 32 gigabytes of that same RAM pool dedicated to the onboard graphics. And the onboard graphics is comparable to an RTX 4070. It's like somewhere between a 4060, 4070, 5060, somewhere around there, or a Radeon 7600 XT, something along those lines. So similar to a PlayStation 5 without the console's extra memory bandwidth. So keep that in mind. But the compute capabilities on this for AI, like if you're gonna do anything with LLM Studio or things like that, this is an excellent platform for that just because you can play around with the VRAM dedicated pool. Coming off of that DDR5, 8,128 gigabytes total. So if you wanted, you could flip this around. So I have 96 for the CPU and 32 for the GPU, you could literally go in the BIOS and flip this around so that the GPU could have 96 and the CPU could have 32, which I guess if you're, all you're doing is AI, then that makes sense. But if you're going to use this as a all-in-one PC with quad channel memory and you can play games uh, with decent performance courtesy of this 8060S, then you would probably wanna configure it similar to the way I have it here. So anyway, guys, that is a look at the, the Strix Halo platform here. Uh, I'm fairly impressed with it so far. We will be doing stuff like live streams and things off of this just to get an idea of what it's capable of. I like that it has up to four monitors. So if you have a Thunderbolt docking station, you can connect it for even more displays because of the, the MST chaining mode for DisplayPort. But anyway, this is kind of a look at how 
the Strix Halo platform looks on Windows. We, we will do some more videos on this platform in the future. We'll be covering things like gaming and that sort of thing, and probably look at AI at some point in the future as well. So if you like this content, do get subscribed, and I will catch you guys next time. Thanks.